In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of the new QI. And then in an additional set of videos, we're going to dive into more detail in each specific area like the viewer and the node graph, curve editor and dope sheet. So uh, let's start at the top here. This is the familiar file menu that pretty much every program has. File and edit with copy, paste, and all those things that you're probably familiar with. This is the toolbar, and this is where you can get at nodes. So you can drop nodes from here into the node graph. And this one's great if you can't remember the name of a node, you can pull it up from here. And the icons are really helpful. To, they're grouped together in groups that will make, puts them in the right family. So all the filters are together, all the color corrections together to make things easier to find. This is the viewer and it's how you view the work that you're working on. Properties bin, which is how you edit the properties of a node. So if you drop down a node here, its properties will show up and you can edit those properties here. In Nuke, these sliders are called knobs. The properties bin, you can modify this number here to control how many properties tabs will pop up in here. If you don't like having a lot of some people get confused really easily when they have multiple things open. They'll reduce this down to one or two. So if I reduce this to two and I have multiple drop down multiple nodes, you can see only two will show up at any given time. And then it just pushes out the oldest node as you drop in new ones. So this is this is great for people who don't like to have too many up at once. You can just control how many you have. If you switch this little lock on, that will cause any new node that you drop down rather than going into the bin. I like to think of this as it's like locking the door on the properties tab. It doesn't go in, it can't go in, so it just bounces out into its own window. So if you, wanted a, if you want a floating window, that's a quick way that you can essentially float windows of new d tabs that you drop down. And the same, same goes for if you double click things, either drop down a new node or double click it to get its properties. It will pop out of rather than dropping into the bin, into the properties tab there. So some people like that. If you like to clear out all of the tabs, in the properties bin, you can click this here and it will clear them all out. Or if you have multiple, let's make this three, if you have multiple properties tabs open and you want to just close one individually, you can close it here with its own checkbox or its own close control, or you can collapse it. And we'll talk more about the individual properties and how to manipulate them when we talk about the node graph. I'm moving down into here. This is the node graph. And this is where you manipulate nodes. And we'll do an entire video just based on manipulating and working with nodes because it requires its own walkthrough. So that's the basics of the UI, of the big picture. But another thing that's worth mentioning is that the whole UI is customizable. You don't have to live with the proportions that it has, and you don't have to live with the layout that it has either. This is the default layout, but there's several different predefined layouts under the Workspace tab. So this is the one we're working on. It's called the compositing layout, but there's all these other presets that they've generated at the Foundry that you can use. If you'd like to create your own custom workspace, it's totally customizable. So you can split panes and modify panes using this menu here. So if I wanted to split this pane horizontally, let's say to add another viewer, I could do that there. I'll duplicate that viewer. And it dropped, by default, it dropped into that pane, but I'm going to grab that tab, 
pull it out and I'm going to just drag that tab into this pane to dock it there. So you can, once you've got panes defined, you can drag tabs around from pane to pane to dock them in any pane that you like. You can add new tabs from that menu as well. So let's add some, an additional tab down here. Let's say that I wanted in that, I wanted a waveform window and it'll drop it into this pane. So this won't be persistent between sessions unless you save it. So if you'd like to save it, you can go to the workspace menu and you can say save workspace if you want to redefine a new one, or you can save it over a pre-existing preset. So if you've modified one of these and you just want to save it back over one, you could do that, or you could define your own new workspace by saying save workspace, give it a name, my awesome workspace. And now I have my awesome workspace, which is predefined. If I change to another workspace, I can jump back to my awesome workspace and I have it perpetually working. Now, uh, here's a, a pro tip for you. It's hard to do a screen cap on a dual monitor setup, so I can't show you, but many people have dual monitor setups, people who composite and stuff. Some people will float a monitor and they'll put it on the separate monitor, but then you'll have two windows that you'll have to click on to get focus from window to window, which becomes a real pain really fast. So if you have two monitors, what I like to do is I like to create a workspace that, that I just stretch across both monitors, and then you don't have to constantly be clicking any windows to give them focus to take input like modifying sliders and stuff, knobs and stuff. So that's all for this video. We'll do the node graph next and working with nodes.